and welcome back to Lab Stories. I'm Jenna, and today we're going to learn about Joan Beauchamp Proctor. Joan was born in England in 1897. She loved animals, especially reptiles. Reptiles are animals like lizards and crocodiles and snakes. Joan studied these animals. She was a zoologist. A zoologist is a person who studies animals in their natural habitat and in captivity. She loved studying reptiles. In fact, she even kept a crocodile as a pet. Joan, the zoologist, studying snakes, lizards, worms, and fish. She built habitats for them all, slimy, scaly, big and small. When Joan was 19, she published a paper about everything she knew about reptiles. She even discovered her own species, the Peninsula Dragon Lizard. This is what it looked like. Joan named this creature Finny. It was named after somebody named Finn, but nobody knows who that mysterious person is. Let's call her and find out. 1-800-CALL-JPP. That's Joan Pochamp Proctor. I could do this all day. Joan, hey, how's it going? I got her on the line. Yeah, no, I'm doing well. I'm just filming an episode of Lab Stories, which doesn't exist in your timeline. How confusing for you. But I have some questions about your discovery of the Peninsula Lizard Dragon. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that lots of animals have weird science names that come from Latin. And I know that scientists get to name animals they discover. That is so cool. So I'm wondering, why did you name the lizard Finny? Is it after somebody named Finn? Oh, it's a secret. But she's going to tell me the secret. Was he handsome? Was he good in the kitchen? But did he know how to fix a car? Oh, he sounds like a lovely man. Oh, no. I promise not to tell anybody your secret, Joan. Good talking with you. Bye bye Oh, Joan named it after a dear love of hers named Fit. What was that? I haven't hung up the phone yet. Bye, Joan. Don't tell her I said that. If I discovered an animal, I would name it the the Big Jenna or the Genoishi or or the Pasta. I really like pasta. No, seriously, I love pasta so much I would name a new animal after it. And then you'd all have to call them the Pasta. Have you ever been to a zoo and seen animals in their natural habitats? Joan specialized in creating habitats for reptiles. She used her special skills as an artist to paint realistic backdrops in their aquariums. She installed a special type of glass that had never been used before in their shelters so special light could get through and keep them warm. She really cared about the animals and pulled all her skills together to do the best she could. Animals lived longer and healthier in captivity because of Joan. Joan, the zoologist, used her skills as an artist. Keep them happy and alive. Joan helped the animals survive to help the reptiles feel at home so they didn't feel so alone. Joan became famous for her work with animals and was admired by all. She said the way to make an animal feel safe was to make the animal feel at home. She even kept a Komodo dragon as a pet. <laughs> that makes me have a lot of questions because that seems like a dangerous pet. So for some information, I brought in Dr. Pie Pet for a beaker break. <laughs> Hello, Jenna. Hello, Dr. Pie Pet. Today we are learning about Joan Beauchamp Proctor. <gasps> oh, 
the famous zoologist and artist. Did you know she had a crocodile and a Komodo dragon and a pet? Isn't that really dangerous though? <gasps> Keeping wild animals as pets is really dangerous and I would never recommend it. But I'm sure Joan knew what she was doing. Well, what do you know about Komodo dragons? <gasps> Komodo dragons are huge lizards and originate from the island of Indonesia. Oh. Sometimes, sometimes they can weigh up to 150 pounds. Holy, mm -hmm. are they dangerous animals? They rarely hurt humans, but they are known to be mildly venomous. So I would stay away. Oh, I'll stay away. Hey, Pipette, hmm. would you want to travel down to Indonesia and go look at some Komodo dragons? <gasps> I'll see how many air miles I have and get right on that. Oh, awesome. Thanks for the information, Pipette. Oh. I always learn so much with you. Hmm. Well, can I? Can I sing the song you've been singing? <gasps> of course. <laughs> the Joe the Zoologist song? <laughs> I'd love to hear it. <laughs> Joe. The zoologist, learning, studying, keeping pets, dragons, lizards of all kinds, keeping them healthy and alive. Joan helps the animals thrive. Joan helps the animals thrive. Watch out, Broadway. <laughs> you, know, you have a great voice. Oh, thank you. What's he in there? Oh, oh, yeah, looking healthy, looking great. Just went to the dentist. Oh, <laughs> good for you. Well, Pipette, hmm. as usual, thanks for stopping by. Thank you for the information and no for worries. joining us on this beaker break. I love coming and keep on doing your riveting research. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh, man, I love pipes. Wow, that would be so scary to keep a 150-pound lizard as a pet. I have a dog and he's only 25 pounds and sometimes he even feels huge. Did you know Joan fed her Komodo dragon eggs with a spoon? Later in her life, Joan was in a wheelchair and she'd often be seen rolling around zoos with her Komodo dragon on the end of a leash. That would be so cool to see. one of Joan's favorite reptiles. We need four simple ingredients, a marker, colored paper, as many sheets as you want. You can do it with one kind or five kinds. I'm going to use three different colors, scissors and tape. Take your paper and cut it into strips. I've cut 
cut out all these strips of paper. What we're going to do, we're going to fold one in a circle and tape it closed. You can also staple it or use some glue, whichever you prefer. So you have a ring and then you got another ring. And you're gonna do this until you've taken all of your rings together. Let's fast forward. everyone this is your body of the snake <gasps> that's okay we'll just reapply it and add some extra tape to reinforce when things go wrong don't worry we got all the time to fix it now we have our snake you can make it as long as you want this is how long mine is going to be next we're going to cut out a tongue snake tongues have this sort of V shape at the end then I'm going to tape the tongue to the end of my ring. Next, take the marker, add some eyes. The dots for the nose. And the cherries are up here. And ta-da! We have our snake. I challenge you to make a really, really long snake that you can wrap all around your body and then name your snake. I'm going to name it Pasta. Guess you could have guessed that. Thank you for joining me today at Laboratories and learning about Joan Beauchamp Proctor. I'll send you a picture when, from Indonesia when me and Pipette go looking for Komodo dragons. Oh, I can't wait to see them. Maybe I'll give them an egg on the end of a spoon. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye now.